Welcome to Celestial Chronicles, where we journey through the annals of time to uncover the mysteries of history. Today, we will be looking for answers to the question, who is Abraham in the Bible and why is he important? Join us as we follow in the footsteps of Abraham, revered by many as a friend of God and ancestor of the nations. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay up to date with our latest episodes. Dive into the past with us and discover celestial history together. Abraham is a key figure in Christianity, second only to Jesus. He's like the starting point of a family tree that leads to Jesus, the one who saves everyone. You can see this in Matthew 1 and Luke 3 in the Bible. To really get what the Old Testament is about, you need to know Abraham's story. It's like he kicks off the whole plan of how people can be saved. God picked Abraham first to play a big part in this rescue plan. In Genesis 15 verse 6, it's the first time the Bible talks about God counting someone as good, just because they believe, not because of anything they do. God chose Abraham to start a huge family of many different people, and that was just because God decided it. Even though God knew Abraham would have a hard time with what he was asked to do, he also knew that Abraham would grow stronger and more faithful because of these challenges. So, Abraham's story is not just about him, but about how trusting in God can change you and lead to big things. Abraham and God Abraham's name was originally Labram, which means the father is exalted. His name was changed to Abraham, which means father of a multitude, when God initiated his covenant with him in Genesis 17. God promised Abraham that he would be the father of many people. However, he and his wife Sarah were apparently past the normal age of having children, therefore, it would clearly be a miracle of God were they to have any. Nevertheless, Abraham trusted God and believed God could accomplish what he had promised. God promised Abraham children, but when this didn't take place as quickly as Abraham thought it should, he became impatient with God and took matters into his own control. His wife, Sarah was still childless, so she told Abraham to sleep with her handmaid, so that they might get a child from the union. A son was born from this union, his name was Ishmael. However, this was not God's plan. God's promise was for the offspring of Abraham and Sarah's union, Genesis 15 verses 3 to 4. Isaac was the name of the son that came from the union of Abraham and Sarah, it would be through Isaac that the nations would be blessed. When God told Abraham and Sarah that they would have a child in their old age, they both laughed. Their laughter at God's plan showed their disbelief that he could do what he said he would do. The Bible tells us, Then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Will I really have a child, not that I am old? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he said, yes, you did laugh. We would like to think Abraham believed God at once without any doubt, but this is not the case. He finds God's word nearly impossible to believe. After all, Sarah is well past the age of childbearing. However, his response to the Lord does not display total disbelief in the covenant promise. He falls on his face, symbolic of submission, trust, and worship. Abraham shows us that real confidence in God doesn't rule out times when his incredible promises are hard for us to see. What did Abraham do? After Abraham was called by God to leave Haran, he obediently did so. In Genesis 12, we read of Abraham, then called Abram, leaving Haran, where his father Terah had settled, and setting out to find the promised land. This account gives Abraham's age at this time as 75, but Genesis 11 and Acts 3 suggest that Abraham was much older than this when he left Haran. Scripture also tells us that he was 86 when his first son Ishmael was born through Hagar, 99 when he was circumcised and 100 when his son Isaac was born through Sarah. Abraham and Sarah were very happy with their new son Isaac. However, God had a test for Abraham. God told him, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you, Genesis 22 verse 2. This would have been a tremendous shock to any parent, to be blessed by a long-awaited child, only to have God tell you to sacrifice that child. The Bible does not say that Abraham hesitated for a moment. In fact, there are certain passages that indicate Abraham's strong faith that God would not take his son at all. Abraham believed that God would raise Isaac back to life if the sacrifice actually did take place, Hebrews 11 verse 19. Whether for God's, Abraham's, Isaac's or for our sake as an example, Abraham took his son up to a mountain, lay him down and prepared to kill him in obedience to God's command. However, God intervened by stopping Abraham from killing his son and by providing a sacrifice in the form of a ram caught in the nearby brush. While Abraham's faith had been tested, he proved his faith by his obedience to God. Abraham had a long and challenging journey. Throughout this journey, he worked hard and experienced grief and blessings. 
Most of the time, he wasn't able to see the path ahead, but he held strong to the promise in his heart. God would continue to fulfill that promise over a thousand years after Abraham's death, until its completion in his son Jesus Christ. We know through Abraham that God always keeps his promises. We may not have all the answers but God surely does. As we close today's chapter on Celestial Chronicles, let's reflect on Abraham's journey. His story isn't just a tale from the past, it's a beacon of faith that illuminates our path today. Abraham wasn't perfect, but his unwavering trust in God's promises shows us the power of faith. He was chosen to be a blessing, and through him, the story of hope and redemption unfolded, leading to the birth of Jesus. Let Abraham's legacy inspire us to live a life of faith that leaves a lasting impact. Thank you for exploring the Celestial Chronicles with us. Remember to like, share, and subscribe for more stories that have shaped our world. Until next time, keep looking up and seeking the truths hidden in the stars.